Hello, and today I will review how to create um, some pixel sorting uh, effect into Smos from scratch. So it's just a um, little beginning of a way to reflect how we can manage to create this effect from scratch on Smod. And then if you have any question as usual, uh, feel free to ask in the comments. And also, sorry for the bad uh, audio quality, but I'm in quarantine uh, with a shitty microphone, so uh, I have no other way to do it. So let's start to create a new composition, and I will do this pixel sorting with uh, my video input. Uh, because I set up my uh, camera here in my devices, and so we will use that to do the pixel sorting effect. So to do the pixel sorting effect, I will create, uh, I will use a utility modifier, which is a compo based uh, modifier. Uh, I already did a little video about the compo based modifier, so better to check uh, what's uh, going on in this modifier, but just for a short uh, reminder. It's just a modifier that takes uh, a composition with a parent input, the parent input being whatever uh, is coming inside the compo-based modifier. For instance, here you see before the modification and then after. So here my compo-based modifier just take my parent input and switch it. So here I put my compo-based over my whole uh, composition. If I put that on my video input, here's what's uh, happening. So I'm going to do that on my um, video input layer. So let's put a right click reset to default here. Okay, so first thing uh, is that we are going to use a 3D plane uh, to do this pixel sorting effect. There's other way to do it, and maybe I will explain that at the end of the tutorial. Uh, so in this composition, I will do a right click camera uh, and uh, top perspective camera, all right? And then I will create a plane, 3D layer, plane, here it is, okay, in the center. And on this plane, I will use a surface renderer instead of the uh, PVR surface. So first thing is that I'm going to use the texture uh, over my uh, plane uh, here. So let's remove the parent input. So here's now my modifier. It does not modify anything, just create a plane in 3D space. Uh, and then let's tear off the specular and put here in the diffuse of my uh, plane here, Let's put a parent input uh, layer. Let's put the surface renderer with the auto illumination at 100%. So we get rid of whatever lighting we may have in the 3D scenery. Uh, and then I need to have my plane on the same ratio than my uh, composition. And if you check on the compo based composition, you see that here I have a rasterized resolution that takes the parent input resolution, which is in this case, the resolution of my uh, video input. If I put that on my main composition, which is in HD, if I check the composition of the compo base, it's now in HD. So this resolution always take uh, by default the resolution of the parent on which it is applied. So I'm going to use uh, those values here because I need to have the same ratio in my plane than in my input uh, image. So to do that, I will take my uh, plane, and what I will really need is the uh, aspect ratio, but unfortunately on the plane, we have only a size in meters and no aspect ratio. So uh, we are going to use the width and height of my composition. So let's do a right click here, create link from, and do the same for the height. Right click here, create link from, and put the link, everything I put inside, uh, Everything I will create here, I will put that under my compo base. So I will be able to export my compo base and reuse it in uh, any other composition. So now we have a resolution width and height, uh, which are disconnected. And I just get back the information, one value on the width, one on the height, which currently is uh, 1280 zero, zero and uh, 720. And then I will plug this value inside my width the width of my plane and the height of my plane. You see that nothing changed because you need to do some actualization for it to work. Uh, so first I will uh, put a multiplier on my uh, on my target. So modifier multiply and multiply this value by uh, 0 0.01 uh, for start. Okay, because uh, else my plane will be like uh, 1000 meter uh, wide, so it will 
go out of the screen. And I will do the same on the plane I hate. And what you see here is that I have not the correct ratio. Let's control shift move that a little bit. You see here as I that I have not the correct ratio of uh, my plane because if I check here for first I need to unlint my fucking values and then let's remove a little bit that. Okay and now second issue you see here that I'm here always moving the height of my uh, plane here as uh, an integer because this value uh, of my composition here are uh, indeed integers. You do not make resolution from uh, 0.5 pixel or whatever. So what I need to do is take back this integer, uh, where it is, this integer value uh, into my link. So here my resolution width is an integer right now, which is uh, always this value here. And first, before I multiply, I will add another modifier, which is to real, because I want to transform this integer into real one. And you see that here, here I do a control click, a control drag and drop to duplicate my modifiers. And so now I'm modifying this into real. So let's do a control shift click and adapt a little bit the value of the eight like this. Okay. And let's do control C, control V. All right, and now if I put my compo base over uh, any other contents, my plane here will automatically take the good ratio. So what I will need to do maybe if I change uh, will be to add another rule to take one of the eight or widths uh, and do some rules to change the height of my uh, the distance of my camera. I already did another modifier, the so vitry uh, modifier effect. Uh, which is on the forum and use some techniques to always get the correct uh, the plane on the correct uh, ratio and the correct uh, camera distance. Uh, for now, what you can do uh, is do a right click, expose as um, plotting point uh, number parameter on the distance, put that here, and let's call that uh, size adjust. Okay. So you will do the adjustment uh, by end. And that's it. Uh, we'll see later on um, if we can do something better. Okay, so now I have my plane with my surface renderer, and now I will be able to do some 3D modification over this plane. So, first, let's do a distort, a 3D transform, okay, and shift a little bit my plane like that, and add a little mask, which will be a layer mask set as current input. Now you see something already is uh, happening because right now I'm using my 3D transform uh, and I'm using my uh, input uh, value. This, ah, you do not, cannot see shit. Hmm. Okay, let's augment a little bit the resolution of the plane because we need to augment that a little bit, like that. Okay, you see a little bit what's happening. Now my plane is deformed. Uh, using the chroma values, uh, the luminance value of my uh, parent input of this image. What I will do now over this uh, layer that I'm using as a mask of my 3D transform is put another mask here, which will be a color mask like this. And let's put that as a key mask and get the value of my skin, for instance. Okay. Let's put the feather at zero and let's reduce a little bit the tolerance. Okay, and invert the mask. Okay, now what you see is the um, currently, okay, let's add a little bit of that. And let's move a little bit of that, maybe on the other way around, I don't know. Like that, for instance. Okay, let's reduce the feather. And the fucking tolerance. Okay. Now what you see, uh, what I did here is just using a displace on a very subdivided uh, plane here. And this subdivided plane uh, is masked by this image that you see on the bottom. So that's why I put a invert because I want not to mask uh, this uh, value here, uh, but to uh, to use it uh, to do my uh, pixel sorting. 
So now you have a basic uh, canvas to make your own pixel sorting. So there's many different stuff you can do with that. Like for instance, if I put on the other side, you see that nothing is happening because I have some kind of Z fight uh, happening. So if I put that on the Y axis, then it goes better. And then you have uh, a lot of things uh, you can do actually using this uh, this method. Uh, and I leave you try uh, to do whatever you want to do. Uh, and just to show uh, another little method we can have to do uh, this kind of, let's put it as it was before, uh, to do this kind of pixel sorting um, can be uh, to use the blur. So that's one way to do it. Uh, and you can adjust that whatever you want. And of course, I will put this modifier on the form in the description uh, on the link. Thing. And one little trouble you can, may have in the compo base uh, when you are setting things up in the compo base is that you cannot visualize uh, layers that are inside it. You can only visualize uh, modifiers. So if you want to see this image and what does the color mask, you need to visualize uh, the mask. And you see here, if I put the invert uh, here value, this does not update. You need to revisualize re it and then you see what's uh, changing. So once you know that, it's become easier. And so another little thing that you can use to do some kind of pixel sorting. Uh, Let's put that as full placement. Okay. Uh, to do this kind of effect will be um, to use a blur. So let's put a blur, a basic blur, augment a little bit the radius, and put that as a custom blur. And in the algorithm, let's leave uh, only one directional blur like that. Okay. For instance, and change the corpse from Gaussian to box. Okay. And now uh, let's change from multipass to uh, what was it again? Uh, maybe multipass was the right uh, so that I can remember what I'm doing here. So this is the correct value. And in the blur, I need to put the aggregator, I think, in maximum or minimum. I light, I don't remember which one. Let's try with. Ah, this one, for instance. Okay, so let's put this blur at zero degree. Okay, let's augment a little bit this radius, its budget. Okay, and what you can do uh, then over this blur is to put a, a layer mask. And what I may do uh, to do this effect with the uh, with the blur is again to use a compo based. Why is that? Is to have access to not depth to normal, to have access to the parent input uh, layer. Uh, nothing more. So let's put a utility compo base. All right. Let's put this blur modifier here on the parent input. You see nothing change actually. But then in my layer mask, I can use a parent input layer. Okay. And let's put, for instance, uh, on this point input, a utility, no, still eyes, which will be a sober set as white. Mm. It's not very what I intended to do. Maybe I can put this mask here. No, it's shitty. Hmm. Maybe. We can use instead of layer mask because what I'm trying to do is to put this uh, image, the parent input image with the sober. It's kind of an experimentation what I'm trying to do here, but there's some of this shape here that are a little bit polluting what I'm trying to do. Uh, and to use my blur only on this space, but what I need to do is not that actually is to put my layer mask over my parent input. Well, not exactly that. To put a mask on my parent input, let's duplicate the parent input. Let's, on this one, put a mask, which will be a layer mask. This should work, let's see. This layer mask, I will put again, uh, where is it? Uh, parent input. And over this parent input, 
I will put the fucking sobel, which is where we are. Okay, let's destroy this mask. Okay, what does it do? It does just a fucking sobel over my mask. And it's this part, this thing here uh, on the bottom that I want to blur uh, using this algorithm. So let's put the blur here. The part input, reactivate that, deactivate this one. Okay. Let's reduce a little bit the sobel. Yeah, maybe in the end of the sobel, we are going to use the same uh, method that I did uh, on the top. Uh, let's use a fucking color mask, set as key, and take one of the color here. Okay. Feather to zero, tolerance to minimum. Invert. Okay, now I'm supposed to only act on this part here. Mm, maybe I'm doing something wrong, I don't know. It's kind of an experimentation, but I should be putting my blur. So no, I have this parent input. Let's put the actual color mask, I don't know what I put this. Okay. We have this color mask. Now what I'm blurring is just this part here. Okay. Uh, okay, that's for that. But <laughs> so first I have my parent input. I have my color mask that allow me to get back only this uh, few effect I have here. Uh, let's add another mask uh, over it, like a circle set in multiply. So just to get this uh, part where I get my head. And then I put the custom blur over this uh, this custom blur, which is a multipass algorithm with the directional blur set as box. Let's put the centering to the center. No, it's not this one. It's not the centering. It's the shift, I think. No. Maybe it was the centering. And let's reactivate the parent input with no deformation here. OK. So now I have two parent input, one that you I use as a background, and one that I first mask with a color mask and a sequel mask, and then a blur over it uh, to just uh, take a part of my pixel and to shift them uh, one way or the other. Uh, and then here, if I change the centering, yeah, maybe that's better uh, with the centering at 100%. Okay, so that's two different methods to do pixel sorting. Of course, here it's a directional uh, with a box curve. Maybe what we can do is a pass, which will be a radial set as box. Okay, and keep only that. And change a little bit the centering. Change its scale. Where is it? It has no scale. I'm going to use the radius. And the sampler. Okay, so that's all for for today. I hope um, that this uh, has been uh, that this has been uh, helpful. And if you have uh, any question uh, regarding this kind of uh, of uh, regarding this uh, modifier, this effect, just uh, feel free to ask. Um, and again, and again. Uh, yeah, in this case, it's uh, the first uh, compo base, so let's call that pixel sorter blur, and this one pixel sorter plane. Uh, the first one here is uh, way faster to compute than uh, this one. And again, I will put both of them uh, into uh, the link in the description. Okay, and see you later.